I'm Betty Bookworm. That sounded a lot funnier in my head. You know me, you know what I do. I read way too much into things. Sometimes I read way too much into novels. Sometimes I read way too much into comic books. And sometimes I read way too much into adult fairy tales. That was very suggestive. Ugh. But this month, I'm reading way too much into poetry. The book of the month for February, as well as the first book of the month for 2019, is Dirty Pretty Things by Michael Faudet. Is it Faudet? 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 I probably should have looked that up before I started filming. I know this is a bit of a deviation from the form, but 2019 is going to be a year of new experiences. And poetry is a valid form of literature to read and showcase. Especially now with poetry making like a huge comeback. Seriously, walk into any brains and nibbles and there are like huge sections dedicated just to poetry. And not just classic Greek or medieval stuff, like modern poetry. As someone who may have been sort of a gothic weirdo in high school, who spent a majority of her time writing self-indulgent poetry rather than, you know, studying, this is incredibly gratifying. Michael Faudet's... I just looked that up. Yeah, I, I should have done more research before filming. <laughs> Dirty Pretty Things is a collection of erotic poetry and prose detailing the passion and heartbreak of a tumultuous relationship. Some of his writing is very sensual, like in the poem The Muse. Body framed, with arms outstretched, wrists roped and roughly bound, from a tiny mouth and pretty lips, you utter not a sound. I paint with words a canvas stretched, laid bare upon the ground. I, I kind of like the imagery with that one because you know, as someone that has written poetry, you know, when you're, when you're writing poetry, it does kind of feel like you're painting with words. So I, I enjoyed the realness of that imagery. Oh, here's one that Alamona would like. Fireworks. She had a mind like a box of fireworks and hands that played recklessly with matches. She would like that one. <laughs> Some of his poems are really bittersweet. As I stated before, there's a lot of heartbreak in his words. Um, a good example of this is the poem Forbidden Love. It cannot be, she said to me, the end is not my making. To keep apart two lovers' hearts is another's undertaking. This might be true, I said to you, but it is they who are mistaken. For where there's a sun, you'll find a moon, and neither can be forsaken. That one kind of makes me cry a little bit. I really, I really like that one. <laughs> and this one being a very bookish type, um, this, this type of poem, this is a poem that every bookworm wishes somebody would write for them. I, I wish a guy wrote a poem like this for me. This poem is called, My Girl Who Writes. I watch you write, my love, my life, my start of everything. Each little sigh, a pen run dry, another painful page begins. Your fingers bleed, I do concede, for a sentence of your making. To which you say, on sunshine days, it is for words, my heart is breaking. So as I hope was showcased, uh, there's a lot of, of poems that can make you hot under the collar from this book, but there are also a lot of poems, you know, that can make you well up a bit, and I feel like that's kind of perfect for Valentine's Day. I recommend this book for anyone who is struggling with an ill-fated or ill-timed romance. I also recommend this book for anyone that needs something salacious to read without going the full Fifty Shades of Grey. Have you read the book? Do you want to read the book? What did you think about the book? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching! I'm Betty Bookworm, and happy Black History Month, happy Valentine's Day, happy Galentine's Day, and most of all, happy 2019!
Oops.